Let me tell you about uh, this story that I heard. I heard about this doctor who couldn't find a job in a hospital. So he opened his own clinic and he, had a, he has a brilliant idea. He put a sign outside and the sign says, get treatment for $20. If I cannot cure you, you get $100. So the person is walking by, sees the sign and said, this is amazing. So he, this guy enters to see the doctor. Say, doctor, I lost my sense of taste. And the doctor said, okay, take a seat here. Say, nurse, please take medicine from box number 13 and put three drops on this patient's mouth. So the nurse comes, she put the three drops, and the patient said, Ugh, this, is, this is gasoline. Congratulations, you are cured. You owe me $20. So the guy said, I can't believe this. He said, I'm going to come again, and I'm going to get my $20 back. So a week later, same person comes back and said, Doctor, I lost my memory. I can't remember anything. So the doctor said, okay, take a seat. I said, nurse, take the medicine from box number 13 and put three drops on this person's mouth. And the guy said, no, 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 don't do that. That's gasoline. I said, oh, congratulations. You recovered your memory. You owe me $20. The guy said, I can't believe it. So he comes back a week later. I said, doctor, I lost my eyesight. I cannot see anything. And the doctor said, oh, you know what? I don't have any, medic any medicine for that. So here you have $100. And the guy said, this is not $100, this is toilet paper. Congratulations, you restore your eyesight, you owe me $20. <laughs> so I want to talk to you today about don't forget to remember. Don't forget to remember. Now, seriously, I realize that our memory is very powerful. I don't know if you ever realized that, how powerful memory is could be. Let me give you a few examples. You could be driving in your car after a long work, long, long, long day at work. You could be upset, angry, uh, sad, and then all of a sudden you remember an experience with a special person. Could be your children, could be your parents, could be your spouse, something nice that happens to you, something that you share together. And maybe that happens many years ago, but it doesn't matter because you brought those memories back to life. Now you feel, all of a sudden, you feel joy. You put a smile on your face and your mood changed because you brought all those feelings and they feel real. They feel like they are happening right, right away, right now, even though they happened many years ago. Memory is that powerful. But sometimes it could be the other way around as well. You could be enjoying something. You could be playing a game with somebody, or you could be enjoying something nice. You're happy. You're joyful. But then all of a sudden you remember that uh, you have a bill to pay. You have... Uh, deadline, and then you remember that, and your mood changes. All of a sudden, you are not joyous or happy anymore. Now you're angry. Now you're sad. Now you are depressed. Because memory is that powerful. It's something that things that we remember are can bring powerful emotions to life, and those emotions can dictate the way. We behave. So I mention this because uh, if you've been paying attention to the Torah reading, this is a special Shabbat. It's called Shabbat Zahor, Shabbat of Remembrance. Why is it called it that way? Because of the second scroll that we read today, where it says that we have to remember where Amalek was a nation thousands of years ago. What Amalek did to the Israelites after they left 
Egypt. Long story short, Amalek attacked the Jewish nation, but not only attacked the Jewish nation. The Torah specifically said that they have no reason to attack, and they attacked the weak and the sick and those people who couldn't defend themselves. From that point, Amalek became synonym with the anti-Semite. I don't know if you know this, but before the Second World War, if you wanted to say that somebody was an anti-Semite, you would call them an Amalekite. Of course, after the Second World War, we call them Nazis, right? When somebody is, is like an anti-Semite, we call it, that person is a Nazi. But before that, we always kept making reference to Amalek as the symbol of someone who hates the Jew for no reason. So in other words, this portion of the Torah is saying that we have to remember that what Amalek did to us. In other words, we have to remember that anti-Semitism is real. We have to wake up. We have to realize that. And at the end of the Parsha, at the end of the portion, it says, don't forget. And I talked about this before. Why it starts, op why it starts the text saying, remember, why it says at the end, don't forget. Well, the rabbis explained because remember is passive. As I mentioned at the beginning, you could be driving your car and for no reason, you remember. You could be playing a soccer game and for no reason, you remember something. You weren't purposely trying to remember, but nevertheless, you did. So that's remember. But don't forget, is when you do something that it will trigger a memory, which is totally different, because now it's active. You're purposely doing something to remember something. So the Torah says, remember, because it's important to remember what Amalek did. But it won't happen by mistake. It won't happen by accident. You have to do something so you will remember that. So what do we do? Well, we come to synagogue and we read this portion every year before Purim. Why before Purim? Because Haman boom, was a descendant of Amalek. Just a little trivia information there. So we have to remember every year, one week before Purim, about Amalek, about Haman, about anti-Semitism. But it's interesting that this is the place where that happens, the synagogue. We come to the synagogue, and the synagogue should be a place that it will help us to trigger the right memories. Week after week, we come to this place. It used to be in person, now it's virtually, but nevertheless, this is the place where you come to bring all those memories to help us live a Jewish life. If we wouldn't have a place like this, if we wouldn't have a synagogue and we wouldn't have a space to make that happen, well, maybe you will remember, maybe you won't. But we don't have the opportunity to make that happen, to make those memories a reality. That's why synagogue is so important, because it's a place where we remember how to be Jews. And I believe it's not a coincidence that at the same week that we read this portion that's called Zahor, remember, we read Parsha Truma, which is the Parsha in the Torah where the Jewish people is commanded to build the very first, well, synagogue. Let's say it's synagogue. It wasn't synagogue at the time. It was a, it was a mini temple, a portable temple, a sanctuary, a tabernacle, we call it. But it served the same purpose. The idea of building that first tabernacle was to have a place where rituals will happen, and those rituals will be a tool to trigger our memories, to remember what God wants from us. If you read the Torah, God said to Moses, tell the people of Israel to build a sanctuary so I can dwell among them. It doesn't say that God will dwell in the sanctuary. It says that if you build a sanctuary, God will dwell among the people.
So in other words, we, they will build this sanctuary. They will go there. Something will happen. And then, all of a sudden, we are going to make the presence of God something real in our lives. In other words, we're going to trigger the right memories. So we can remember what God is expecting from us. It's interesting because the Parsha would provide the list of things that people have to bring to build the sanctuary. And the rabbis explain that every element that they have to bring represents a part of a human body. Let me give you a few examples. It says that they have to bring uh, gold, silver, copper, blue, purple, red, and so many other things. And the rabbi said, gold represents the soul. Silver represents the body. Copper represents the voice. Blue represents the veins. Purple represents the flesh. Red represents the blood, and so forth. In other words, the synagogue is not a place where God is going to physically live. The synagogues are designed to be something that it will help us to remember how to live our Jewish lives so we can make God part of our existences. That's why synagogues are so important. So, this week that we uh, are commanded to remember, I think it's important also to remember how important synagogues are in our lives and how important it is to support your synagogues. Because without places like the Sherizetic, we will never remember how to be the best version of ourselves. Synagogues are places where we can make that happen. Shabbat shalom.